folks, this is Fat Guy Flies RC. Today we're going to be going over the uh, Flight Test G44 Widgeon. That is what I have right here to show you, just to show you a few of the key features of this plane and why I think this is one of the most spectacularly awesome planes that you can get today. And it is the first standard plug and play airplane standard size that flight test has put out. Now they've got several of your uh, quick build kits and some micro kits that are, are PV or uh, um, uh, plug and play, but um, this is their first standard size. Now I don't have the specs memorized, but it has a 1200, uh, 1200 uh, wingspan, which is about 44 inches, 1200 millimeter wingspan. Uh, the length is 965 millimeters. It has two 1250 kV motors and two 30 amp speed controllers. Now, nice thing about the, well, there's several nice things, but one of the things, top feeder. So you put your battery in there, you can it's, uh, you slide in and put your piece of Velcro inside there and slide your battery. It comes with an XT60. And what I might add, you've seen these XT60 connectors that have the protection or the better connector, that's what this one has. It helps protect the uh, connection of the battery. And like I say, the uh, props come, three bladed props, and they come already set to counter rotate and they spin inwards like that. That's already set up for you. And uh, at least a four channel uh, receiver is what you'll need to install. Um, it comes with landing gear and also uh, landing gear and a tail wheel. Now, nice thing about it is just two screws that hold this tail wheel off are, are on. You take them two screws out and use the same, same screws and you can attach your water rudder. Now, also the pontoons just slide right into this hole here and off. Now if you're going to be landing and taking off on pavement or runway, um, I suggest leaving these off. Um, let's face it, water is going to be hard, but water is softer than ground. So if you leave these on and you have a less than perfect landing, you have a chance of breaking these off. So I would, if, if I'm going to be taking off on water, of course put them on, and uh, otherwise I'd leave them off. The landing gear is just pressure fitted in, and if you find that the landing gear falls out fairly or is not snug, just go in there with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, okay, and the wire part of the landing gear, just bend it out ever so slightly and fit it in nice and snug. The uh, everything on this plane, you don't you don't need a bit of glue. I don't know if you can see it right now, but there's uh, two pins, if I can get a hold of it, two pins that just slide or slide in and lock in place. I'll get it over here, hopefully you can see it. And all you have to do is slide them out and voila, your wing falls off or comes off. It just tongues and grooves in like a lot, a lot of planes. Okay, I'm trying to do this and hold this at the same time. Right back in. It snips in nice and it sits in there nice and snug. Put your pins back in. One twist. You'll feel them lock into place. And same thing over here. In. Lock into place. Now, it does not have flaps. Okay. That's your standard nice big ailerons. Uh, of course, elevator, rudder. Um, this rudder is held in by magnet. Or, I'm sorry, the elevator is uh, held in by magnets and uh, you have a nav light here and a nav light of course the red and the green on either end of the wings as far as for LEDs. Now another nice feature is you need to service your motors or service your ESCs. The top hatches over the nacelles are held on by very strong magnets. They will not, the maneuvers I've pulled off of this plane it has extremely fast roll rate you do not need, don't worry about them magnets, they're not flying off. The only mod, I've actually done only two mods to this plane. Of course, I've given it a, if you call it a mod, I've given it a coat of my polyacrylic, which I've talked about in several videos. 
The other thing I've done is gone from the bind plug for power, I ran two wires up and without having to cut any foam, used the channels that the ESC wires are in and ran me an LED that I've hot glued in both right up here in these air, in air inlets here on these nacelles. That way I didn't have to cut any foam and it gave me forward landing lights. Doesn't and if, if you now these are just LEDs I've put together from other models and stuff, so they're not like it's for sale. But anybody who's handy with good LEDs could easily run that route, put them right here in this uh, in the cell here, hot glue them in, which is what I did, and not have to worry about cutting any foam. Anytime you, the more the less foam you cut, the better. But those just, I mean, they're in there strong. And uh, this is an incredible flying flying plane. I will tell you, my, my maiden, which you'll, you, um, you see in the, my uh, website um, with this plane, the best maiden I've ever had of any plane. Seriously, it was an absolute joy to maiden. Very uneventful, very predictable plane. And it does have extreme, I mean, it's got some, some char uh, aerobatic characteristics about it. It really does. Um, but I'm very pleased with this plane. It flies real well. Um, now. This is plastic here, so that when you are on, you, you can take off on wet grass or even you know good grass if you wanted to. Just understand that you know you're going to wear your paint off, like you've already seen that I've had some less than stellar landings, and the geotech uh, pavement that I land take off is already sort of wear the paint off. And now this part is foam. This is why I say get that polyacrylic spray on, and it gives you a little bit of a protection. I probably will eventually. You know, get some color match paint down at Lowe's or Home Depot, and you just take take one of the nacelles down, and they'll color match you your paint, and then I'll touch that up. Um, the only the only it has very predictable, great roll rate. It's very very forgiving. The only drawback with this plane and its flight characteristics is that if you like with most planes, if you come down to uh, too slow. If you're landing too slow, it will want to tip on you. So you want to have a nice, positive approach. Nice, obviously level approach, but give it a nice, uh, solid approach. Not, not too fast, but at the same time, you want to make enough, enough speed. If you'll watch my videos on this plane specifically, just, you know, just search my site for G44 Widgeon, and you'll see at the very last, it'll right before I'm about to touch down, it'll drop a wing or two on, some, on a lot of my landings. So just be aware of that. You want to have a nice positive uh, approach. Um, it's a good looking plane. It's big enough to where you can see it really well. Um, I thought that this silver and blue would be kind of bleed out in the sky, but it really doesn't. I'm able to keep orientation without any real problem. Um, the counter rotating props make it it's, it's just so locked in. I mean, it's locked in when it flies. So I'm very pleased with it. The only thing you have to really, if you want to call it part of assembly, is whenever you're putting it together, is you do have to attach the uh, rear rudder to the servo. And that, and it's all, and that servo is already centered. So as long as you don't mess with it, you won't have to worry about centering it. I found this plane on par with the better E-Flight planes. And that's saying something. Y'all know how much I love my E-Flight planes. That This is definitely on par with it. Um, this is this is definitely a, a keeper. Now, yes, it is $239. I thought it was a bit much. But let me tell you something, folks. In the industry of making RC planes, the money that the companies have to put up is, is designing those molds that they use and that's very expensive and for them to put this plane out then their their company's going to be around for a while okay they're a good family based company flight test is and I didn't mind to me this plane should be like $189 or two maybe 190 bucks but it's 239 and I'm willing to pay that extra to them because it is flight test if you haven't gone to flight test and you haven't experienced their website, then you have been doing yourself a disservice. You really need to go to flight test. Josh Bixler um, is the, uh, I guess, the founder of flight test, but 
I will tell you this, wonderful man. I've actually met him before uh, when they had, I want to say, flight test 17. He was eating in the same restaurant that I was eating at, and I just happened to see him. I walked over and shook his hand, and all his friends were there. And very genuine person. Just, he, it just you would see on the website, you think, well, hey, you see his watch his videos. He seemed like a very, he's exactly the same in person. He's very